Hey, Brian. Hi, Keith. How are you? I'm doing good. You know what? It's almost spring. It's owl spring? And you know what happens in spring? Baseball, barbecue, and beer. Go on, give it up. Because <laughs> we love the beer. We Go love on. beer. And hold it. This is Denver Wine Guys. And this is Keith. I'm Brian. And DenverWineGuy.com. Welcome to our Tree Spring Show. And we're doing beer. Did you know tap a keg. The fans love the beer, right? Not as much as you do. I love the beer. And you know what? I got the ring to prove it. That ring is for opening beer, okay? But it's we're always on me 24-7. But we're not going to use it today. <laughs> no, I guess we're going to use this opener today. We're doing a keg. And now we're going to teach everybody how to properly open a keg. For those of you who are in college, probably already know how to do that. <laughs> those of you who, who have forgotten, we're going to remind you. So we're going we're gonna to show you. If you're looking at this this tap, you can see how this... Can I say nipple? I, I think you should say it. should say it. No, this, you, this nipple is... I do you like saying that, actually. Well, so. you know what? I just don't know what to, else to call this. So you want to make sure that that is that's depressed so that you just got this flat surface, okay? And then uh, you got to take your, your top off. If you don't take that off, then you can't get your tap. Oh, hold it, hold it. What beer is this anyway? This is this is a, the Michelob Amberbach, which comes in. If you notice, this keg is not just any any ordinary size keg. This is yeah. a sixteenth of a of a of a full keg. Is this something they use in a bar? Uh, yeah, bars that have a small uh, space. Okay. So they they can't put in a a full keg or or homes that have small spaces. People think they're full kegs, but it's actually a sixteen gallon keg, which is referred to as a half keg. So a keg that's about the eighth size is a pony keg. I feel like the gallon price is right. <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> so so what I wanted to show everybody was these two little indentions that are here uh, on the keg, and you want to make sure that your two indentions that are on your tab, you see them here, that they they actually line up. So is it nipple to nipple, or is it just uh, uh, in, nipple to indent? Gotcha. All right. Good. So we're going to turn this until the point where it doesn't stop, any, or it, it stops. You can't move it any further. You're going to pull this handle up, all right? Push down. Will it work if you don't pull the handle up? It won't work. No, okay. It won't. Now, only because uh, this keg's been here uh, for a few hours, I right. know it's already settled. <clears throat> right. I'm going to go ahead and do this. See, you, you bring up earlier you know, how I'm going to say, you know, when I was, you know, in school, high school or college, you know, back in the day, we, you know, it was like, hey, don't, don't pump, pump the, the keg. keg. I mean, <laughs> people would actually get really upset. Well, because it always created foam. But, is that true? Well, what people don't realize is that you can actually drop a keg, and, and it can hit the ground from, from a good distance. If it if it has not been tapped, when you haven't put this, the tapper onto the keg, this thing's still sealed, um, it's not going to foam up the keg. No? No. What, what makes a keg foam? Uh, temperature. Really? Temperature is what's going to foam up the keg. So if you got your your keg that's icy cold, that you get it from the store, it's in the fridge, it's cold. You you don't want to just throw it in the back of your truck in the hot sun. You need to keep it chilled. Right. If it if it warms up, it'll foam up. Okay. And in, in if you drop a keg, it won't foam up unless you put the tap on it. Once the tap's on and you drop a keg, then it will foam up. Okay. So if I tap this thing, you're saying no, no, maybe maybe this not maybe this is not what you're saying. But if I Tap it and pump it like 50 times. Is that not going to foam it up? 50 times probably will. Okay. You're adding so much pressure to the cake. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you're right. <laughs> um, it, the, the guy, every, everyone who decides they're going to gonna pour themselves a beer, they pump it three times. The next guy comes up, pumps it three times. Yeah, it's going to get foam. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, for sure. So try it first Well, before you pump. Th this is the other mistake that people do. Everyone knows that when you do a, a beer, you want to tilt it to the side so you don't get foam, and they want to be gentle with the, the depression. Oh, okay. And that's actually going to cause more foam. Oh. If you're gently squeezing it, look at that. It looks like it's, a yeah, it looks, root beer float. Yeah, but look at the nice head on that. Yeah. The <laughs> cream. I mean, you see no bubbles. I don't, can, can, can we show that? Look at that. There's no bubbles. That just looks like total cream. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. And there's the falcon. <laughs> People down below enjoy that. <laughs> now, now I'm going to show you again how you're supposed to do it. So instead of slightly depressing on this, you want to press it down all the way so that you've got... Whoa! Whoa. That's, well, you know what? Maybe our keg is getting a little, <laughs> a little warm because we're showing foam. <laughs> Are they have some ice cream in there? <laughs> <laughs> we, 
That's just not going to no, work. That, that, this <laughs> segment's not going to work, actually. Because <laughs> you know son what? Son of a bitch. <laughs> Can I say that? Can I say son of a bitch? <laughs> yeah, it's the internet. <laughs> you know what? You can say that. So, this show is all about not... Okay. Um, that does look like a root beer float. <laughs> it does. Oh, look. Oh, a little beer. Oh, there's some beer coming out now. <laughs> all is not lost. There's... <laughs> I wish I had a really a straw that reached down that far. Because I'm really thirsty. I'm like, I feel like I'm in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> and I got no beer. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But I, I hear what you're saying. I, got, I won't even say what this is because that's a different show. But, um, <laughs> but um, so we are the Denver Wine Guys <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> Sometimes we're the Denver Beer Guys. Yeah. But, but the beer. The Denver Phone Guys. <laughs> Denver Phone Guys. Denver Phone Guys with uh, Michelob. Denver Bach. Do, 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 do they want us to say that? Probably not. Well, <laughs> well, if it's chill, if the keg's cold enough and hot, right. shut up and pump this <laughs> mess. That's part two. <laughs> That's going to take like a, three days to get that thing cold. But no, it's getting there. Um, but yeah, there's a reason why we're in the wine business, not the beer business. <laughs> so, but I think that concludes this, this, this episode. <laughs> does it? It does. <laughs> so bring on spring and bring on baseball and bring on the beer. And if it's all foam, just wait a while. It'll it'll work. It'll it's only been like a minute. In <laughs> like two more minutes, it's going to be all beer, and I'm going to drink it. And right now, and you know what? I want to drink it right now. Well, you know what? Typically, when you first when you first the first couple of beers are going to be foamy anyway. It's all the beers afterwards that are going to be good. I like that. going to be good. Yeah. I, do I have a beer mustache yet? Uh, no. No. Because no, you usually have a wine mustache. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm trying for the, the you know, got, got, you know, the milk thing, but I'm not, I'm not doing that. Got beer? Got beer. All right. Um, yeah. I think this concludes our show. I think so, too. Thanks I'm, for watching. I'm Keith. I'm Brian. And this is DenverWineGuy.com.